Hello, everyone. I'm White Cow. Nice to meet you. Today, I will explain about saving disk space on computers. With the recent advances in AI, it has become common to operate within virtual environments. However, there is an issue where deleting files within a virtual environment does not increase the available space as perceived by the host OS, making it difficult to manage disk space efficiently. Based on my actual experience, even after deleting the stable diffusion model, I was unable to free up any disk space. Watching this video, there's no doubt that you can increase your disk space. In a recent attempt, I managed to reduce the use space from 300 gigabytes to just 5 gigabytes. This means I was able to free up 295 gigabytes of disk space. First, I will explain why deleting files does not increase available disk space. Since it's easier to understand through subtitles in a video than explaining verbally, I'll proceed with that method. After that, let's put it into practice. Now, let's check the location of files used in Nubble Zone. For clarity, we will use Explorer to do this. Will display the user's home directory. However, since these are set as hidden files, we will make sure to enable the display of hidden files. Files are located under the user's home directory, which I will demonstrate in a video. Once you navigate to this folder, you can expect to find names that suggest its purpose, such as Canonical or Ubuntu indicating that the OS used in WCell is Ubuntu. Files are located within a folder named Local State, which is further down the hierarchy. Now that we have identified the location of the files, let's compress them to save space. This part refers to a convenient disk management tool integrated into Windows. Although copying the address of the files found earlier via Explorer is the easiest method. For learning purposes, let's also check their location using the command prompt and PowerShell. What I mean to say is that the way to reference environment variables differs between the command prompt and PowerShell. We'll explain this in more detail after we have checked the files. In PowerShell, right after launching, you can navigate to the file location with this command. In command prompt, as previously mentioned, the method of referencing environment variables differs from PowerShell, so the command will look like this. Today, we will work using the command prompt. First, we will shut down WCell. When using WCell, simply closing the window of the Linux distribution does not necessarily terminate background processes. This is because a WCell session can continue running in the background, maintaining its active state, and thus it may continue to consume resources. That concludes the explanation now. Let's move on to the actual operation. As before, we will verify the location of the files, but I believe that using Explorer is the most understandable way to do this. Once the location is confirmed, enter the diskpart command. Diskpart is a Windows command line utility that performs disk-related management tasks such as creating, deleting, and formatting disk partitions.
Please be aware that it does not allow file system level operations like moving, copying, or deleting files and folders. I apologize. I made a mistake with the file name. Now, the file has been selected. Continuing, we will proceed with compressing the selected file. Now that the compression is complete, let's check how much space we were able to save. We managed to save about 40 gigabyte. If the effect is not significant, Another method to consider is zero filling, which was explained at the beginning. The operation of zero filling means filling the unused space on a disk with zeros. After this operation, compression is performed. Zero filling is primarily used for two purposes. Although it can be likened to cleaning in everyday life, more specifically, it can be considered equivalent to thorough cleaning or tidying up. That's all for today. Thank you for watching.